tell you how I got started singing something that I never thought I could do anyway but as a a small brat running around the house I was always singing and my mom would tell me to shut up but when she didn't hear me singing she would say where are you I don't hear you <laughs> I'm from a little place called Bristol Tennessee and um, I got started in the business through the church. Um, Hood Memorial AME Zion Church right in Bristol, Tennessee, singing in the choir with all the other kids. And then one day, a gentleman came in and said he wanted to start a quartet. And he wanted myself, he wanted my cousin, Sharon Robinson, my brother, Harris Howard, my other cousin, Arthur Henderson, and his cousin, Charles Simpson. So actually there was five of us, and the pianist, um, Bobby Harden. And we were sitting in his, in his room, practice room, around the piano, the first time, and we started singing. And he said, okay. William, you're going to be the lead singer. I said, no, 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 no. I'm not a lead singer. I, I just want to do background like I do in the choir. He said, no, 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 you'll be all right. You, you, you're, going, you're, going to do, you're going to be the lead singer. So, he gave us some stuff to do. And we started practicing, practicing. And I said, wow, this is pretty good as long as some, nobody boos me. You know, so we were singing around town and in different churches, and we got more and more popular. And then we started traveling with uh, other professional gospel singers uh, and doing some opening up for them. So that's basically how I got started. And I also sang in the choir at the school, high school, which was quite an experience because I always put myself a little lower than the other tenors. I sang tenor. But I thought the best tenors were the first tenors. They couldn't hit that stuff. I couldn't, I couldn't quite figure out how to hit that, those high notes the way they could, but they were so pretty. So I sang second tenor in the choir at, at, at school, which is Slater High School, Bristol, Tennessee, again. And then moved on there to the college at Tennessee State University in Nashville. Formed a group called the Fabulous New Tones. And I wrote a couple of songs, one called I'm Not Worthy of Your Love, and one called Our Love Was Destined to Be. I thought I was writing about my high school girlfriend, this is where these things go in entertainment, but neither one of them worked out. Our love was not destined to be, and she didn't think I was worthy. <laughs> no, I don't know, it's not quite like that, but it's sort of like that. But things didn't work out. But anyway, we put those songs out, and they got to be pretty well known up in the Chicago area, um, Virginia, and a few other places. And then from there, I got sucked up into that Vietnam thing for a minute and sang a little bit after I made it out of Vietnam alive and with uh, basically good health, um, which I'm blessed to, to be because that wasn't a, wasn't a very good thing. I'll just leave it like that. And um, got the Fort Dix. Started singing. Well, actually, let me back up a second because when we was in high school, we had a group called uh, um, Wow, the Uterpians. Yeah, the Uterpians, which was a Sometimes we had as many as 20 people in the band. Now, picture this. We're down south in Tennessee. It's myself, it's my cousin, and another guy, Michael Anderson, who they call Little Caesar. We were the entertainers. 
We were the three black dudes in the, in the band. Everybody else was white. The music was off the charts. I'm telling you, we, had, we could do anything we wanted to with that music. And we used to play in some different places where most blacks wasn't playing, when not singing. We did Sam and Dave act, and Little Caesar, who was a little short something, did a uh, James Brown act. And I mean, it was off the charts. So we were very, very popular. We even sang in some of the colleges around. So anyway, let's skip back forward. Got to Fort Dix. I had another year, another six months or a year, something like that to spend at Fort Dix. And I figured I'd be going back down to Atlanta, going back down to Atlanta uh, to, to try to live because I wanted to be somewhere where some excitement was. And But uh, what happened, we formed a band called the United Black Smoke. And when I was working, with, in the hospital as a, a, a dietitian intern, sort of. Otherwise, all, all I did, we, we worked at menus and stuff. I would sing all the time, all the time. This one guy that worked in the same department of me would, would notice me singing. And it just so happened that he was managing this band, up and coming band, but it wasn't up and coming, they, everybody was raw. They, he was putting it together, called the United Black Smoke. He, he came to me one time, he said, man, wait, you're always singing, man, you, you sound pretty good. He said, I, I want you to come, come to rehearsal. I said, for what? He said, well, we need a lead singer. He said, these guys are playing, they got the instruments, blah, blah, blah. And I'm managing them, would you mind coming over? So I went over and I sang a little bit. And they said, okay, hear what we need. Spin one day in the south, in the mirror. 